what is up guys it is pastor picks here with my first video i've been uh contemplating making youtube videos for a while and, and you know what i figured why not just jump right into it i've learned so much from the people that, that you guys probably all know like vincent valuables and harry tornado and pro picker and um commonwealth picker and you know there's a billion of them um that are so amazing you know tesla picker i could i could keep going on and on but you know i figured uh, maybe i can bring a, a different viewpoint as a novice reseller on ebay so uh, this is just going to be sort of advice and you know sort of tips on what has gone well for me and as things progress i definitely will be open about my mistakes as well because i make plenty of those i think it'll be sort of a different journey of someone who doesn't really know what they're doing <laughs> and is figuring it out alongside you guys. So uh, with that being said, this is just gonna be uh, literally just a handful of different you know, bolos and things that I look for and things that I would suggest um, as far as a new reseller getting uh, their feet wet. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. These are X number of <laughs> bolos, things to look out for, and just general tips, and hopefully you guys will learn something new from this beginner picker. All right, item number one, or category number one, um, vintage toys. So this is, you know, I, I'm, I'll have some examples of things that I've already sold, and I'll have some examples of things that I just got, like these amazing Road Champ MXS um, sealed toys from uh, Kmart from the year 2000 with when it comes to toys especially anything that's old always always scan it you never know if it's gonna be worth something and I'm glad I scanned these these were three and four dollars a piece depending on the model the smaller ones like this one right here this one right here these they sold to me for three and the bigger guys like this guy they sold for four and all of these range from about 30 on the low end some 25 um, to upwards of you know 75 100 and sold comps are few and far between um, but I used uh, worth it uh, or worth point rather excuse me to find some examples of older listings and and price them that way you know and I, I priced them a bit up because we're coming into Q4 and we are also you know the only ones that have these on the market right now so those are always good to look out for vintage toys anything sealed give it a scan you never know if it's gonna be worth it or not all right item number two um, I'm gonna switch it up some exciting some not exciting these my friends are books a lot of people don't like dealing with books but if you can get them cheap enough it's gonna be end up being worth it like for example I I kind of just grab you know hard covers that look valuable I you know you some of them have the price on the back there like this one was 50 for retail had no idea scanned it it's you know still going for about 35 40 I believe um, so that was a great pickup you know I, I just for example here are some just random hardcover books that are not worth anything but for 33 cents a piece, I can take them down to Second and Charles, or you can take them to any bookstore. Um, and so far, I've done it two times, and I've more than you know tripled my money at least, um, even when they're you know offering very low prices. It, it's something that you can always be on the lookout for if they're cheap enough, especially if you're looking for Harry Potter books. If you get a collection of those together, they go for 60, 70. I just got a 60 or 70 for the hardcovers, you know, and any other noticeable collections. I just try to, you know, lot them together, and it usually ends up working out all right. Item number three to be on the lookout for. These are not bolos, but I mean, well, they kind of are. But um, plush, you know, a lot of people for some reason don't deal with plush, and I don't know why, because usually you can get it very cheap, especially at yard sales. Um, like for example, this Baymax, I probably paid a couple bucks for, you know, shipping is so easy because, you know, soft and <laughs> not going to get damaged, uh, when I ship him, especially if you get notable characters, Disney, Pokemon, Squashmallows, uh, things like that. Or another sort of different kind to look out for is, um, rarer, older vintage, uh, teddy bears like Day Dakin, Dakin, I don't know how to say it. 1979 in an amazing condition. So this will take a long time to sell because I have it listed pretty high. 
Um, but when someone comes around and is looking for it, they're going to be glad to pay for it. I'm always going to be picking up plush, especially if I can get it for under a buck that has tags. The bigger stuff can go for a lot of money too. I sold a, uh, a Shrek. Uh, I bought them. I did pay up for that. I got them for seven bucks. Uh, but I ended up selling, selling them, I think, for like 50 or 45 or something like that. All right, item number four. Probably already know, but why not bring up? These actually are not the best uh, guitar here. Guitar is the one that I had the, I did have the Explorer. I'll pop a picture up of that one. Um, it sold very fast, so you know, I, I didn't have it for very long. But those are great to look out for. They're actually not that bad to ship. I was very worried about that in the beginning. But you can just sort of Frankenstein some boxes. Maybe I'll put a guide up. There's already some good guides out there, though, you know. Um, but if there's interest, of course, you know, I'd, I'd be more than willing to. But yeah, you can get some good money for them, especially if you find the dongles. The dongles by themselves are already worth some good money, especially if you can get them for a couple bucks. It's a no-brainer most of the time. For most people, this one's probably a no-brainer. But I think it's worth uh, touching on, especially for, you know, anyone who's newer to reselling or you don't really dabble with this stuff. But media, whether it's video games, DVDs, CD, especially sealed stuff. It's sealed, I always look it up. My first sale on eBay, as I started a couple months ago, I uh, went to a thrift store, paid 10 cents a piece for media, and actually found two really, really good DVDs. I actually, I found more than that, but the two that I remember, and I'll pop the comps up here as well, um, the first item I ever sold was a Lunatics, uh, I believe season two, sealed DVD, and that went for a whopping, I believe, $120. I paid 10 cents for it. So, amazing find. And then I also found a uh, different anime, and that one, I believe, was it was open and still sold for 60 or 70, I want to say. So I always scan anime sealed. I always seal, uh, scan sealed. Cartoons are always good to look out for. Anything, you know, rare, old, that kind of stuff. Outside of the bolos, which, you know, hopefully you guys can find those. The filler games, they're very, I think, important uh, to just continue a stream of sales and feedback. And, you know, it only helps. I am more than willing to spend two minutes to make five bucks. It supplements the store, and I enjoy picking, you know, video games and such. So even if I only sell these for 10, free shipping, you know, I'll only pocket four bucks. Um, and 10 is about my limit. 10 free shipping is where I sort of draw the line. But especially, you know, new CDs, those are always worth scanning. You just, you know, peel it, pop it in, put it on the shipping label, and it's in the post. It's something that just constantly sells. People always want video games, especially, uh, but CDs, DVDs, if they're rare, super great. And you can ship with media mail, which just makes it so much easier. Trailing back into uh, other obvious stuff, and then I'll get to some of the more interesting stuff, at least in my opinion, and stuff that, you know, some people will know, some people might not know. But, in the obvious realm, Funko Pops. Funko Pops are always worth looking up. I, uh, I'll pump up three comps of um, some Pops that I found for $8 a piece. Well, they were on sale from 10 to 8 I just saw these, you know, Funko Pops, didn't know them off the top of my head. Um, they were 10 bucks a piece. A lot of the times you will only get, you know, 15 or so um, for the common ones. Uh, so I was not, you know, I didn't have too high hopes. But if you take a look here, they ended up being <laughs> pretty great. You know, super fast sellers. They sold almost immediately and um, I made really, really good profit really fast. So keep your eye out for Funko Pops, especially at yard sales. You can get them cheap. Um, but even, you know, wherever you see them. Definitely give them a scan, they're worth it. So now, this this one will be pretty obvious right here. Pokemon stuff. I just found this today. Pretty excited about it. It's, it's pretty beat up, but I believe it has all the pieces inside of it. I won't open it right now, but um, I believe it's complete. I'll have to go in and count it. I paid four bucks for it. Um, in good condition, I've seen these go, I, I think, if I remember correctly, like $100, $150, which is crazy. Pokemon stuff sells amazing, whether it's cards, whether it's, you know, anything limited edition, even Oreos are going crazy right now because of Pokemon. So um, keep your eye out if it's Pokemon, Pokemon Monopoly, Pokemon board game, you know, VHSs. Um, Pokemon stuff is just immediately uh, focused on that. Now, I think this is probably the one that will uh, surprise people or people might not know. Um, hopefully I can bring a little bit of new information to some people out there, even if you're experienced. So what I have here, excuse the bag, I have these little cube guys. So what these guys do, if you didn't have them growing up, is you connect them and then they interact with each other. I have six of them, so they all match together. And if you didn't know, these can go for great money. Well, I found nine of them. 
Um, only six ended up working, which is okay. And I think I paid five, maybe eight bucks for all nine of them. Six end up working. Um, these six, I think I will be able to get around anywhere from 60 to 70 bucks for these little cube guys. Tamagotchis are great, but also cube world. Who would have thought it turns out they are worth some good money. But yeah, hopefully, you know, that's, that's a little golden nugget for, for some of you guys. All right, now back to some of the more staples, more commonly known, but for new resellers, this might be good information. Certain Microsoft keyboards, this one is the Comfort, what is it? Comfort Curve Keyboard 2000, okay. These guys need the cube world. <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> but if I remember correctly, I believe goes for about 30 bucks, I wanna say, um, pre-owned, maybe 25. 20, uh, something like that. But either way, I think I paid like three bucks for it. You know, you can find these all day, super basic, you know, easy to test out. There's a website called keyboardtester.com. Yeah, I believe that's it. Uh, it's a nice little tool that shows you what buttons are working. All right, three more. I don't even know what number we're at. I lost, I lost count. It'll be in the video title, who knows. These might be a little bit more obvious, but for newer sellers, you know, I didn't know about it when I started. Right here, we have some, oh, and this is my first time getting these. Um, some vintage Halloween jack-o'-lantern type dealios. Both of them, unfortunately, are broken in one way or another. This handle is broken like that, and this one does not have a handle. So I don't know for how much I'll actually get for these, but if it was, you know, in good shape, uh, I believe they sell for, you know, 20 plus, especially during this season. So great to keep a lookout for. I paid 50 cents. Nobody thinks they're worth anything, so they're great to, to nab. Also, just to sort of tag along with that, I found this Bath & Body Works soap dispenser. I only saw one sold comp and it was with another soap dispenser for 95 cents. You know, I definitely would take that risk. But any of that kind of, you know, maybe it looks generic and it, like it won't be worth anything, but it's a soap dispenser that's worth, you know, 15, 20 bucks. Um, or it's jack-o'-lanterns, little jack-o'-lantern trick-or-treat type things that are worth, maybe these will go for 20 total, you know, I don't know. I probably will lop them together. And Halloween stuff is great to look for. Whatever is seasonal, it's very important to be reactive to what's going on. You know, toys are hot right now because we're coming up to Christmas. People are going to be doing gifts. Everything's pretty good around this time of year, at least from what I'm seeing. Uh, oh, geez Louise. My camera got tired of me talking. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys to death. And I realized it's a little too dark using my little uh, light LED box. I got my uh, ring light. As I was saying, a quarter four. It's great for new sealed toys, even open toys. Even newer toys that are open are actually doing pretty good right now, especially with the coronavirus slowing everything up. So <clears throat> definitely don't sleep on those. Keep an eye out for them. So I don't know what number we're on, <clears throat> but I think I have two more things that I want to touch on real quick. One is new old stock. This Memorex um, personal compact disc player. I don't know, I can't find any comps for this thing with the speakers. The CD player goes for, you know, anywhere from, I want to say 18 or 20, something like that, all the way up to, you know, 35, 40, but that doesn't even include these, uh, these speakers that probably aren't all that nice. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, research, list it high if all else fails, and then you know I can always take an offer. I always err on the side of overpricing because you can always come down, but you can't go back up. Now, if you watch some other YouTubers, you probably have heard this many times, multiple quantity listings, they are the best. It's so much easier, obviously, because it's one listing for multiple items, especially if you get a whole ton of them. It's really just easy money coming in. You don't have to worry about listing and taking pictures of all these different items. For example, these hot cocoa and cream bath and body work uh, lotions. I, I believe these sell for about, you know, 12, 13 bucks. Easy to ship, super fast. Got three of them, so it'll be one listing for three items. Makes life so much easier. So anything you're able to list multiple quantities of in my book is just, you know, a must have. So even though I could probably keep talking because, you know, ADD and I could just talk and talk and talk and my camera couldn't even handle it. I think I'll go ahead and wrap it up. If you've learned something, definitely let me know down below. I want to hear what you guys have to say. I really do want to start making content more. My hesitation is uh, A, just time because I run a business and I do reselling. It, it's going to take a lot of work to grow an audience. So I definitely have some interesting ideas as far as you know, maybe some giveaways and I really want it to be a community where people help each other work together. It's, it's a very 
welcoming community the resale community is. I've already had interactions with, you know, some of the great guys like, you know, Harry Tornado and Pro Picker and Retro Rick and all those different people just by commenting on their stuff. Um, so hopefully this can make it to them. You guys are what really uh, allowed me to get a leap start on this. I watch pretty much every single, not every resellers, but as many as I can find that I, you know, enjoy and I enjoy most of them. It's informative content. Information is so important, especially in reselling because there's just so many different items and so many different categories that I haven't even started looking into. So I'm excited for you to come along the journey. Maybe we can make it a little different because that's someone starting from scratch. So you guys can see me grow, you know, and I can definitely let you guys know some mistakes I've made that you guys can avoid. So let me know if that would be an interesting video for you. Um, but yeah, let me know if you learned anything down below. If you have any bolos or things to look out for that you think I should look out for or any other people who might be reading the comment section, let them know down below. Let's help each other out. Definitely stay tuned. Subscribe if you you want to see more of this and let me know down below what I can do better, you know, what kind of videos you guys want to see and we'll just figure it out from there. You know, maybe I'll do some picking, maybe some more of these Bolo videos. Hopefully you found it informative. I'm done talking your ear off. Pastor Picks, thank you guys so much. You can follow me on my Twitter at Smash Pastor, my Instagram, it'll all be listed in the description. So thank you guys so much and I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Thanks. Peace.